When you are praying in tongues, it's like you're on the runway for God to take you to whatever uh, destination he wants you to go. So it's important that you do things that are in alignment with understanding what God's will is. That's what Ephesians say, uh, understanding what the will of the Lord is. So there is an understanding of God's will that you have weapons to enter into that understanding. And that understanding is where all your, uh, your power, your glory is, your miracles are, your provision is. When you labor and praying in tongues and praising God, you open up your soul to hear him clearly. When you pray in tongues and you thank God, you thank him for things, you open up the spirit realm to your soulish man. Remember, your soulish man is where you comprehend things, is where you understand things, is where you know things. You are only connected to God according to the, your soulish realm. Remember, Jesus said, what does it profit a man to gain the world, lose his own soul? The soul is where you experience the voice of God. That's why you got to catch this. Every single day, the Holy Spirit is talking inside of your spirit all the time. But your soulish man may be disconnected from the words from the voice. That's why it's so important to have a prophet of God because the prophet of God comes and quickens your soul so that it can hear what God is saying. Are you catching this? It's important to have a prophet of God because they bring the soul into what the spirit can do. The spirit is carrying all of God's activities. Now, remember in the word of God, we see Elisha talking to the young prophet that's nervous. And remember, he prays for the young prophet when the Syrian army surround him. And the young prophet says, uh, uh, Elisha says to the young man that's following him and prays for him and, and tells him, Lord, I pray, open up his eyes that he may see. Now, what is Elisha doing? He's connecting the soul of that young man to the young man's spirit. See, his spirit could see angels. His spirit could go past the natural realm of attacks and see what God is doing. But his soul was disconnected. So when Elisha says, Lord, I pray, open up his eyes that he may see. Those eyes are connected to the soulish man that he has that was blocking off the sight prophetically. So everything that God does to train you is to connect your soul to your spirit where all of God's activities, abilities are hidden. When Jesus died on the cross, the veil was torn. The veil in a spiritual sense is the soul being submitted to the flesh. So when the soul is submitted to the flesh, there's a veil over the spirit. Your spirit cannot move in its true ministry, its true functions, because the, the soul is immersed in the flesh. And so let me just show you something. Anxiety is different from patience. Patience is in the spirit, your spirit, but anxiety is in your flesh. So when you're an anxious person, your soul is submitted to your flesh, not your spirit. So remember, your spirit is carrying miracle schedules from God. Your spirit is where all of your promotions with God is. So imagine if you submit yourself to the flesh. That anxiety also has a schedule that's not from God. It's from Satan. Your 
your spirit, if it is not being used, if the spirit that God implanted inside of your body, if it's not activated, imagine your soul, even though everything that God has for you is in your spirit, is inside of you, you'll never live it out. And that's, that's so dumb. <laughs> I don't even want to say it's crazy. It's dumb. Because think about it. All of your healing is in your spirit. So if your soul is immersed in your flesh, you live without that healing. All of your money is in your spirit. So if your soul is immersed in your flesh, you're living outside of the blessing money. I was thinking about that. You see uh, famous people, they get rich, but they still get touched. Famous people get rich. Uh, the worldly people, they get rich. They still die. They still get robbed. They still get damage. The blessing of the Lord maketh rich and has no sorrow. He protects you when he blesses you. When he makes you rich, he also makes you wise. And then uh, I want to say this to you. God will never make somebody wealthy without also giving them a seer's ability because you're going to have to see people. You're going to have to see whose company you can't uh, permit any longer. Sometimes until you, um, not sometimes, all the time, until you recognize who God does not want you to be around, he will not make you wealthy. Because wrong people will never be permitted by God that he didn't schedule to be in your life to enjoy that wealth. Number one, when you become wealthy, everybody got problems. When you become wealthy, everybody got needs. All of a sudden, you the Messiah. You Jesus. Back then, they didn't want you. Now you're, now you're hot. They all on you. Back then, they didn't want you. Now you're hot. They all on you. As soon as you become wealthy, everybody got a problem all of a sudden. And then sometimes people be acting like you switch up on them. Nigga, we didn't switch up on nobody, nigga. Ain't nobody switch up on nobody. The same way I ain't have nothing. If I ain't have nothing, you wouldn't be able to ask for nothing. Correct? Nobody switched up on nobody. You know, people, people when, they, when, they, when, they, when they see you come up, then they be like, oh, you know, why you switched up? Switched up? When I was down, that wasn't the way that it was. So how I'm up now is switch. It looked like you switched up because you believe that my role should change. When you become wealthy, everybody got a need. Everybody got a problem. Everybody going through it. When you become wealthy, if you ask somebody how they doing, man, you know, dog, you know, I'm going through shit right now. When you become wealthy, everybody's story change. Now, when you poor like them, they don't talk like that. But when you become wealthy, everything change. Y'all could be talking together. Ain't no, ain't no talk about. But as soon as you become wealthy now, all of a sudden, oh, I got this, I got this, I got this. Remember when God is making you wealthy, how people switch up on you. When they see you start coming up, you're wearing nice things, you're looking nice, you're smelling nice, you got nice things happening for you. You watch how that conversation changed with you. Those are wrong people. If when I'm poor, my conversation with you is different. Now, God make you rich. Now the conversation change. You know that that person is not right. You'll need to know this. The spirit of God obviously telling you this for a reason, because some of you are, your harvest is actually closer than you know. Spontaneous riches is closer than you know, because you've been faithful. A lot of people are not faithful. You need to tap yourself on the back and pat yourself on the back when you're faithful to God with money because many people are not faithful. It's hard to find a faithful man. It's hard to find a faithful woman. It's hard. It is hard. Jesus said it's hard for a rich man 
to enter into the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is simply the system of sowing and reaping. And saints, a rich man is not just a man with a lot of stuff. A rich man is also a man that is stubborn with money. A rich man is someone that wants to build up their provisional place without God's plan. A rich man, remember uh, in Revelation how Jesus was saying that you think that you're rich, but you're poor. So you hear that here you understand the revelation of a rich man is not just a man that visibly has a lot. It's also a man that think that he's going to have a lot or he think he already has a lot. And so he doesn't listen to God. It's hard to find a faithful person. There are people that start listening to God's plan and then they stop. Something happens, whether they get offended at the man of God, whether somebody enters into, into their life and they lose their fire for God, they get into a relationship and now they're so wounded by the relationship, their faith can't even flow out of their spirit no more because their soul is wounded, blocking their spirit, so they can't even honor God no more. Something always interrupts a person from sowing. Something always interrupts. And it's funny how people can't even detect when Satan is going to interrupt their sowing path. It's hard to find a faithful man. It's hard to find a woman that trusts God. It's hard to find a man that trusts God. It is hard. I've been in ministry for years and I haven't found, I haven't found five people that I can look at and say this person is faithful. They'll never say, I haven't. I haven't. I have it. One thing that is um, uh, one thing that happens when a person becomes faithful is that God has been so eager to find a faithful person that he pours out his spirit on them. That's see, you got to understand when God made Abram rich, God was hungry. He was hungry. He was thirsty. He had so much built up provision that he couldn't give to Cain. He couldn't give to uh, the people in the Old Testament. He couldn't give it to Terah. He couldn't give it to Abram's family. He couldn't give it to the family of Adam. You notice he has so much built up blessing. So when Abram becomes faithful, God pours it out on him. God needed to find somebody that he can pour out. You know, God got a lot of blue finances. <laughs> you know, I'm actually talking in a, 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 I'm talking in a sexual way, which the sexual anointing is, is God's anointing. But God has a lot of blue provision. God has a lot of blue um, financial debt cancellation that he can't give to people because they're not faithful. It's hard to find a faithful man. It's hard to find a faithful man. It's hard. It's hard to find someone that keeps on flowing with God nonstop. And they don't let the enemy have any place. It's hard. There's people that even get excited about God's will. And all Satan do is, and as soon as Satan just but blow. They lose all of their fervency. Jesus talked about it in Mark chapter four. He said, when the sower comes and sows the word, as a matter of fact, let's go there. It's worthy for us to go there. Let's go there. It's worthy for us to go there because Jesus was talking about something that is powerful. And this has been my experience in life as well. And it's been, it was Jesus' experience in life. He can't find faithful people. He was wrestling with 12 men on why is your heart hard? You have seen the miracles. You've seen me provide. You've seen me multiply but your heart is still hard. Remember, Jesus had to tell them, did you not see the loaves, the miracle of the loaves, where you was able to bring baskets of provision after I worked the miracle? Their heart was evil. Remember, the, the, the hindrance of faithfulness is evil. 
and the hindrance of evil is faithfulness. Wow. A person that is faithful is no longer connected to evil. And a person that's evil is no longer connected to being faithful. People of God, can you discern the evil inside of you? Don't turn me off. And then the evil manifests two days from now, two weeks from now, and then the enemy can laugh at you. I'm talking to your soul. Can you recognize the evil that's in you? Can you? Because evil is anything that goes on within your mind that even stops you from achieving and locating the thought that God wants you to think. Saints, you notice when Jesus said, who do men say I am? Then he said, who do you say I am? Jesus asked him the question because he's saying, let me see whose soul is going to locate the thought that I want them to think. You know how many times in life I've asked somebody something and their soul couldn't locate the thought I wanted them to think? You know how many times I've done that in life? And somebody look like they're flowing with you, they're flowing with you. And then you ask them a question and they can't answer the question. And one question shows that was all deceit. You can't locate where I am. And that's the only thing that salvation consists of. Being located by God, being located with God, and locating God. Being located by God. Being located with God. And being a locator of God. That's all salvation is. Being saved means that I am safe. Meaning that I am located by God, located with God, and located a locator of God. Many people can't do it. The soul is, do you even know what God wanted you to think about today? Wow. Do you know the thought that God wanted you to think about today? Do you know? And let me ask you something. What investment have you picked into knowing the thought that God wants you to think today? What investment have you have you released to find out? Saints, Solomon wanted to know the wisdom of God for his life. But look at all the investment he's putting out. He's putting out his time. He's a young man, but he's not with every woman. He's not with every man. He's seeking God. Solomon. Look what Solomon does secondarily. He's telling God, thank you all the time. I praise you, Lord. He has a glory around him because he's so thankful. He has a glory around him because he carries the spirit of gratitude. Thirdly, he is in joy. He enjoys his salvation. He enjoys what God has taught him. He enjoys that he's chosen. He enjoys. You notice the people that always act like they're chosen and they're always going through something. Nigga, please. People be up there talking, you know, it's hard being chosen. It's hard being sick. Nigga, please. If, if it's so hard being chosen, get your mother loving, get, get your, get your mother loving self and go serve Satan. You ever hear people up there talking, you know, when you're anointed, it's hard. Man, I've been anointed from the womb. Literally. When I came out the womb at two years old, I was already singing hymns with my mother. I was up there worshiping as a little boy. I used to have my action figures demonstrating healing with my little WWF toys. It was WWF at the time. It was WWE, I think now. 
I was already practicing to demonstrate the power of God. Three years old, four years old. You ever seen the people up there, you know, I'm so anointed. You know, it's hard. You know, it's so hard. It's so lonely. Nigga, please. <laughs> Nigga, please. Number one, once you recognize how much evil spirits people got in them, you won't even want to be around them. When you recognize how much people think against God all the time, they have imaginations against God. They don't want God's will. Once you recognize that, you wouldn't even want to be around them. Once you, you recognize how people love the will of Satan, why would you actually want to accompany around yourself, around somebody that's wicked? You know what wicked means? Even if they hear the truth, they're going to find a way to twist it. You ever spoke to somebody, told them the truth, and then they went go find a Bible story so that they could contradict what you told them? People, when, when you talk to a wicked person, you could have a deep conversation, convict them at 3 p.m. Do you know what they're going to do at 3 a.m.? They're going to find five scriptures to show that you was wrong. You know, I heard, I know you said this to me, but why does the Bible says this right here? I know that you told me that, uh, you know, my name is Billy. I'm not supposed to be with uh, a pilgrim, but uh, could you explain to me why John was in the bosom inside of the bosom of Jesus right here in the Bible? You talk to a wicked person, they're going to find scriptures to contradict everything that's of wisdom. The Bible said that it's better for you to beat a man than to win a fool. It said that if you, it's like you beating blows, a hundred blows into a person and they still not recognize. That's how it is when you deal with the fool. That's what the word says in Proverbs. I'm just giving you an example. So why would you want to be around a wicked person? A wicked person is a fool. That means that even if you tell them the right thing, they're going to find the wrong thing and they're going to say why they're justified in doing the wrong thing. So you want to make company with people like that? Some of you all be up there acting like God got you in a place where he doing you dirty. Oh, I ain't got nobody to talk to. Mother lover, who do you want to talk to? You want to talk to somebody that's going to spit nonsense in your ear? You want to talk to the serpent that's going to tell you what you could do and still destroy your whole destiny while telling you to do it? You want to listen to somebody that's going to tell you the same rudiments, the same rules that Satan was able to tell man kind from the beginning of time to cause them to operate as victims and as people that don't have any respect for themselves. That's what you want. It's crazy how Satan can produce a desire in you. Sometimes women be up there telling us, I'm lonely. I want to be in a relationship. Oh, so you want a man sperm to enter inside of you so that you can become more demon possessed. Baby, you already crazy. You already crazy. Over a hundred percent of women when they come out the womb is crazy. Number one, your daddy be unsaved most of the time. God can't find righteous men to have children. And then righteous men, we can't have a lot of children. We can't have a lot of children. We can't have a lot of children. Because we got to govern the little children that we have. We, we, if we have a lot of children, oh man. We're going to have to live in heartache. Because Satan rules women. Satan has always ruled women. And Satan will always rule women until a woman get fed up and say, I am going to be different. And I'm saying this to provoke you on purpose. Yes, sir. I'm saying it to provoke you. Most women are Jezebels. Most women are demon possessed. There are not a lot of women. And, and, and even, them, even, even religious women, 
Religious women only follow men of God because they want to sleep with the men of God. That's not, that's, that's the only reason why they follow. Most women, I didn't say all. That's the only reason why they sleep with a man, they, they, they follow a man of God because they want to sleep with the man of God. That's the only reason. Most times. They don't follow the man of God because they recognize their demons. They don't follow the man of God because they recognize I'm crazy. They don't follow the man of God because they don't recognize that they are a witch, that they are Jezebel. They follow the man of God because they're thinking about, oh, oh, maybe, maybe one day, one day. Most women ain't got the Holy Ghost. You're not going to find a lot of women with the Holy Ghost. You're not going to find a lot. Most women are crazy as hell. And they don't know that they're crazy. They call it prophetic. Jezebel was like that too. Jezebel was a prophetic woman. She had prophets underneath her where she would give them messages to go speak. The prophets of Baal was underneath Jezebel. That's, that's who their leader was. When Elijah destroyed the prophets of Baal, these were all men and women that were underneath Jezebel. We got that same thing in our generation. It's hard to find a virtuous woman. It's hard to find a faithful man. It's hard. This message is to provoke you, and it is the God honest truth. God can't find many men or women that he could work through for a long period of time without them going back to Satan and bowing their knee to Satan and serving Satan. He can't. Look, you're on fire today. Let's look at you three months from now. You done went back to your same sin. You get hyped off of the word of the Lord, and you go right back. You go right back to bowing down to Satan and you got the power to debunk that nigga and you still don't debunk him. You go right back to the same thing that you got the wisdom and the information to destroy the satanic power or off your soul and you go right back. God need genuine and pure True worshipers. People that's not getting excited for a time or for a word, but they are committed to impressing God with their decisions, their mind, and what they have chosen to do with their choices. That's what he's looking for. You can't find it. You can't find it. Bible said in Psalms, David kept saying that God is looking upon the earth, upon the children of men, seeing if there's any that seek God, seeing if there's any that understand. That's what the Bible say. God is right there looking from his throne. Who? Who? Who actually knows me? You, find, you talk to many men, they're just religious. You talk to many women, they're just religious. They don't know nothing. And when I say know nothing, I'm not talking about information. Yeah, they could talk to you about the, 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 the Kairos moment. Yeah, they could talk about, oh, 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 you know, you know, the Kairos, this, the, you know, the, you know, this is the Feast of Tabernacles time. People could tell you all that bull. But when it comes down to knowing the Holy Spirit, Knowing God, you're not going to find many people that know God. You, you're going to find a lot of people with information. Because if you knew God, he wouldn't permit you to be so wayward. If you knew God, you wouldn't want to be wayward. If you knew God, you wouldn't even want rebellion. If you knew God, every day you wake up, you will recognize, I need to cling to him today. I'm nothing without him today. I need to call on his name today. I need to talk with him today because I'm nothing without him. People don't know God. They go to sleep in sin. They wake up in sin. Repeat. Go to sleep in sin. Wake up in sin. You are not tired of being broke? You are not tired of being sick? 
You're not tired of losing the fight of life. You're not tired of being distracted. You're not tired of not accomplishing. Sh what did you accomplish with your life? Some of you all think I'm talking about money. You're stupid. I ain't talking about money. I'm talking about decisions. I'm talking about hitting the goal that God wants you to hit in your choices. That's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about houses and lands. I'm talking about doing the will of the Father daily. Exactly what he wants you to do. Some of y'all, God wants you at a job. You ain't at no job. But you don't know what God wants you to do. You ain't going to do what he's saying. Some of y'all out there twiggling your finger. Oh, I wonder what God got for me today. And God like, you supposed to be at a job. You ain't at no job. Some of you all, you supposed to be in a certain city. You ain't in the city. You going where it's convenient. You going where you think that, oh, I, I want to go there because it's hot there. They got a lot of good food there. Look, you going there for your belly. You know, they got a lot of cool spots. You notice when people move into a city, they just talk about all the landmark spots. You know, they got good malls there. You know, they, they got good food there. Nigga, that's why you going there? You going there because of food and clothes? Movie theaters? Bowling alleys? That's why you went? You know how dangerous it is to go somewhere that God didn't plant you? You know how dangerous that is? Wow. You know how dangerous it is to live in a location without the protection of God. That you could get caught in the crossfire. Something could be happening. And just because you're there, you get hit. It's not even for you, but you get hit. All because you're not where God wants you to be. There's no protection when you're not doing the decisions that God wants you to make. There's no protection. There's no protection. And oftentimes, children of God always lose in battles because they are not willing to humble themselves and find out what the will of God is. How do you got time? To know what Joe Biden is doing. And you don't know what your, the will of God is. How do you know what's going on in foreign countries. And you don't know the will of God for your life. How do you know what's happening on the news. What's happening on social media. How do you know what's going on in hip hop. You don't even know where you're going to spend eternity. How come something is wrong. That you have so much interest in everything except your own soul. How? How do you know that you got the Holy Ghost? How? If you struggle like everybody, how do you know that you got the Holy Ghost? How do you know that the person of God is inside of you? How do you know you got the Holy Ghost? How do you know that he's ruling you? How do you know that you have the Holy Spirit? Because if you have the same interest as everybody, how do you know you got the Holy Ghost? If everybody is on a certain path, a certain focus, a certain interest, you're in that same interest, that same focus, that same path. How do you know that you have the Holy Ghost? When you got the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost don't want to pay attention to certain stuff. The Holy Ghost don't want to focus on certain stuff. The Holy Ghost don't pursue certain stuff. The Holy Ghost don't do certain stuff. The schedule is different. When you have the Holy Ghost, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10 says that we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ to give an account of the deeds done in our body, whether they be good or whether they be evil. How do you know that you have the Holy Ghost? How do you know 
that you're going to be in heaven when you leave your body. How? What's your sign? What's your fruit? What is the evidence that you have the Holy Spirit of God? How? How do you know? You wake up every day. God can't use you to do nothing. God can't even send you to an assignment, have you there. He can't do nothing. You, you just void. How do you know that you have the Holy Ghost? What, what are you living for? You know, that was one of the things I keep telling you. When I was younger, I'm so glad I didn't listen. I mean, I was a teenager and I still, the Holy Ghost inside of me manifested. I'm so glad I didn't take the path of everybody, everybody, everybody. Oh, the Holy Ghost manifests inside me. I said, no. 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 I'm so glad that I didn't follow the counsel of the ungodly. And boy, they'll be aggressive too. They'll give you scriptures. They'll tell you why you should be lazy. They'll tell you why you should be messy. They'll tell you why God gonna forgive you after you do the very things that you anointed not to do. You know, they, 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 the counsel is so dumb, dumb you down. Meanwhile, you miss out on a life of promotion. You miss out on a life of progress because you're listening to fools. And they themselves ain't produce nothing. They themselves ain't produce nothing. For you to make it in the spirit, you got to be different. You got to be different. A pure heart don't need continual encouragement. People need encouragement because they're filthy. Filthiness creates an overwhelming craving for encouragement. When you're filthy, you're not clean. You need somebody to keep on telling you the right stuff because you're trying to Disregard the filth. When you pure, there's divine strength that God gives you. You discover deliverance when you're pure. But when you're filthy, you'll stay in a situation for years. When you're filthy, you don't have no energy to be used by God. When your heart is filthy, you can't even hear the Lord shouting at you. No, 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 no. Don't go there. Don't go there. Don't do that. You can't hear. Your filthiness and blindness are co-workers. You'll be blind financially. You'll be blind in your body, bodily. You'll be blind concerning everything. Lord, open my eyes that I may see. Lord, open my eyes that I may see. Let me see. Open my eyes that I may see. I need to see. I need to see what you want me to do that I haven't done. I need to see the schedule that you have for this body. Why did you wake up this body? There's something you want this body to do. 
You see, do you understand? Why am I talking to you right now? Can I be asleep? Can I be over? I could be in Paris. I'm just showing you what I can. I could be in Africa. I could be in New Zealand. I could be in Israel. I could be anywhere. I could be doing something. I could be at bowling alley. I could be chilling. I could do. Why am I here? Because this is the schedule for this body today. And because I'm praying in the spirit all morning, I know to do this. Not because, oh, I'm a prophet, so I have a word. I'll have a word. I'm so, I'll get on because I, I, this is, I'm the man of God. No, I'm here because this is the schedule for this body. I'm actually supposed to be uttering these words. You know why I don't apologize to people when I do stuff? You know why? You think I'm going to apologize for doing something that I'm scheduled to do? Oh, you should have said it like that. Oh, oh, okay. Could I be mad at you? Somebody that don't even say what God want them to say all throughout their life. Should I be angry at you that you don't understand how God talks? Should I be angry at you that you don't understand the will of God, the personality of God, the plan of God, the decisions of God? Do, should I be mad at you, somebody that don't even walk in his decisions? That's why you don't apologize. People get their feelings hurt. You know why they get their feelings hurt? But how about you look at how many times God got to get his feelings hurt looking at his creation, not know how to be one with him. And that's what he made you for. He made you to be one with him. And imagine you're not in agreement with him. Once you have a compassion for God, you'll decide, Lord, I don't want to be like everybody else. Position me to agree with you. Give me, how many times you ever prayed and say, Lord, give me the soul that agrees with all of your decision. Give me the soul that believes you. Give me the soul that is loyal to you, Lord. Lord, give me a loyal soul. How many times you ever prayed that? Lord, give me a loyal heart. See, we don't pray these type of stuff. You'll be telling us I'm waiting for God to talk to me. What if, what, if, what, if, what if God been talking with you, but you don't like his doctrine? You want to talk about what you want to talk about. David was praying different stuff. Lord, created me a pure heart. David praying different stuff. How about you pray prayers to be the best experience for God? Why don't you cry out to God every day? Lord, I want to bring you pleasure. And then Satan, Satan, Satan use even preachers to tell people, you know, you can't please God. Jesus already pleased God. There ain't nothing you can do to please God. You imagine the evil in that. You just told me I, I can just do whatever I want. I can grieve the spirit and it's okay because Jesus pleased God. You know how foolish. If Jesus pleased God, then why the hell he got me down here then? You ever thought about that? If he's so pleased, why, 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 why is he still sending? He's sending his breath down here in physical bodies. Why? Why did he wake me up if he's satisfied? That's what they told us. So why he wake me up? Do that sound like somebody that's satisfied? So God is, he already pleased, but he gonna wake me up. Jesus done paid it. He done satisfied everything. I can't do nothing to make God happy or mad. So why the hell he woke me up? So everything is set. So why life's still going on? Why do I have decisions? You imagine Satan 
done infiltrated even preachers so that Satan can make people hurt God. Indoctrinate people to do God wrong all over again. While God's suffering with your life, you up there talking about, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. <laughs> I'm the right. <laughs> Proud is they. And I'm not talking about saying that to change. I'm saying saying that to convince yourself that what you have chosen that's evil is not evil. It's okay. And God looking for friends, people that fear him and will tremble before him and that will bow their knee today, not at the end of their life, not when they got two minutes left on the earth, but now while you got strength in your body, while there is arms and legs and eyes and ears, while you got the chance to sin against him, you'll choose to bow now. You know why you don't pray for someone that persecutes the church to die? You know why you never pray that? Because the spirit of persecution will always exist. Let me give you an example. If somebody's name is Timothy and they're a persecutor of the church and you pray, Lord, I, did, I command fire on Timothy. May Timothy be judged. What you don't understand, the spirit that Timothy has of persecution will exist somewhere else. That's why the Lord never wanted you to pray and get so 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 entangled with getting revenge on enemies. Because what you don't understand is that same spirit that they themselves love and they live by is going to exist on the earth even after they leave their body. Let me give you an example. When Jezebel died, the dogs licked her blood, but her spirit operating in people did not die. The same way when Herod died, the spirit of Herod operating in people didn't die. When Pharaoh died, the spirit of Pharaoh operating in people did not die. When Haman died, the spirit of Haman operating through people did not die. That's why God, that's why God said, blessing don't curse. That's why God said, pray because pray for those that despitefully use you because the truth of the matter is there's going to be someone else in the earth that have that same spirit that they had. Are you hearing me? That's why God didn't want you to get so entangled. Because when you think, okay, if this person dies, I'm good now. No, there's somebody else that has that same mindset that they had. And they will rise up when they see you and have the same perception of you that that person had of you when they were alive. That's why you don't invest time in enemies. That's why the gospel is not about you trying to get revenge on enemies. It's not about you trying to worry about enemies. That's not what the gospel is about. It's about you. It's about you bettering yourself and receiving the Holy Ghost so that you can make changes about you, so that you could get your money, so that you could get your health, so that you could get your wealth, so that you could get your restoration, so that you could get your freedom, so that you could have the love of God poured out in your heart for you to love your neighbor as yourself. Somebody, you got my volume a little too loud in your workplace. I'm not trying to get you fired. You got to turn me down in your volume a little bit. I hear myself. I, I ain't going to call your name out. But you got to turn me down or you ain't going to have no money. All right? Your boss, your boss ain't supposed to be hearing me. Turn me down. Watch me on the replay. Be quickened, be quickened, and let the new man come out. Let the faithful man come out. 
Let the new man come out. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. No, all things pass away. All things have become new. If any man come after me, must deny himself, pick up his cross and follow me. If you walk in the spirit, Galatians 5, you won't fulfill the lusts of the flesh. Let the new person come out. Let me just tell you something about November. Use the grace of thankfulness to discover the real woman that you was made to be. Use the grace of thankfulness to discover what type of male, what type of man, what type of king you've been really made to be. Use the grace of thankfulness to discover how God wants to use you. All your money is in God using you. If God can't use you today, why, why should he make you wealthy? You already can't be used. You're not in the floor of being used. So what's going to happen with that money? It's going to fall into an unusable vessel. God made Joe rich because he could use Joe. God made Isaac rich because he could use Isaac. He made Jacob rich because he could use Jacob. He made Abram rich because he could use Abram. He made Esther rich because he could use Esther. You notice he could use Esther. She discovered the schedule of the spirit was to help the children of Israel. To annihilate Haman. Imagine if she was just there and just struggling with demons in her mind. You know, King Azarius, he don't love me. You know, I don't like this kingdom. Why I can't live with King Azarius? Why he don't got me living with him? I can't even talk to him when I'm ready. I got needs. I won't be touched sometimes. I won't be touched sometimes. He don't even touch me. I got things I got going on. But Esther... She ain't waste her time. You know what she did? She found out why did God pick me here today to use me? And while she discovered the schedule of God, it was accomplished why she was made queen. See, the same way Saul, God wants to use him. He inaugurates him to use him. And Saul lets evil in. And now the whole purpose of God using him is aborted. Goes nowhere. Never happens. Because God can't use him. God has to tell Samuel, go anoint someone else. Imagine if you do get to your destiny in money and God can't use you. Imagine if you get to your destiny in your health and God can't use you. Imagine you get to your destiny in your living arrangements and God can't use you. Wow. And the whole reason why promotion happens is God is saying, I want to use you more. Why does God promote me? Oh, he just want my life to be better. But, but what, what's also, what's also, what's the also? In God promoting you, I want to use you more. Why does God feed you his word? He wants you to have faith so that he can get pleasure from you. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Everything that he uses to feed your faith is to birth a pattern of pleasure in your members. 